myself Amnash Ujha and today I am going to start chapter 5 Human Capital Formation in India Here we want to know about what is human capital formation One factor that has made a great difference in the evolution of mankind is man's capacity to store and transmit knowledge we need investment in human capital to produce more human capital out of human resource. It's divided in two parts. First, physical capital and second, human capital. First, physical capital. Physical capital includes all those inputs which are required for further production like plant, machinery, factory, buildings, raw materials, etc. The physical capital is needed to make use of physical resources and its accumulation is quite important for economic growth of a country. In the human capital, it refers to the stock of a skill, ability, expertise, education and knowledge embodied in the people. Human capital is needed to make effective use of physical capital and there is a need for investment in human capital to produce more human capital out of human resource. In this human capital, societies need sufficient human capital in the form of complaint people who have themselves been educated and trained as professors and other professionals. In other words, we need good human capital to produce other human capital as like doctors, engineers and etc. What is human capital formation? Human capital formation refers to development of abilities and skill among the population of the country. It is the process of acquiring and increasing the numbers of persons who have the skills, education and experience. Human capital formation is associated with investment in man and his development as a creative and productive resources. In the world of GM Mira, human capital formation is the process of acquiring the increasing the number of persons who have skill, education and experience which are critical for economic and political development of a country. Source of human capital formation. Here are some sources are given about human capital formation. First, expenditure on education. Second, expenditure on health. Third, preventive medicine. Fourth, curative medicine. Fifth, social medicines. Sixth, provision of clean drinking water. And last, good sanitation facilities. I am going to explain one by one. First, expenditure on education. Proper utility of manpower depends on the system of education and training of people. First level skill on an educated person is more than that of an uneducated person, which enables him to generate more income than the uneducated person. Economists have stressed the need for expanding educational opportunities in a nation as it accelerates the development process. The spending on education by individuals is similar to the spending on capital goods by companies. Individuals invest in education to increase their future income and raise the living standard. Second, expenditure on health. Health expenditure is a source of human capital formation as it is directly increase the supply of health labor force. Poor health and unnourished adversely affect the quality of manpower. A sick labor without access to medical facilities is compelled to absent from work and there is loss of productivity. Therefore, expenditure on health is important to build the maintain productive labor productive labor force and to improve quality of life 
of people in the society. From the health expenditure, the various forms of health expenditure include preventive medicine known as vaccination, curative medicine, medical intervention during illness, and third, social medicine, spread of health literacy to the people. Provision of clean drinking water. It's necessary for all the people to face clean drinking water. And last, good sanitation facilities. It is need for at the time to everyone for became a healthy human resource. On the job training, as stated earlier, productive of physical capital is substantially enhanced with the improvement in human capital due to the reason many firms provide to the job training on their workers. Such training has to advantage that it can be proved fast and without much cost. It increases the skill and efficiency of the workers and leads to an increase in productive and productivity. On the job training may take differences from workers may train in the form itself under the supervision of a skilled worker and workers may be sent off campus training. Expenditure on migration. People migrate from one place to another in search of job that fetch them higher salaries. So unemployed people from rural areas migrate to urban areas in search of job. So expenditure on migration is source of human capital formation as enhanced earning in the migrated place is more than the increase in cost due to migration. And last, expenditure on information. Expenditure is incurred to acquire information related to labor market and other markets. It involves amount spent on seeking information about educational institutions, their education standards and cost of education. Human capital and economic growth. Economic growth means the increase in real national income in the country. The contribution of an education person to the economic growth is more than that of the illiterate person. Similarly, a healthy person also contributes to economic growth by providing uninterrupted labor supply for a longer period of time. So, the human capital formation not only increased the productivity of human resources but also stimulated innovation and creates ability to absorb new technologies. So, education provides knowledge to understand changes in society and scientific advancement, the subtlety, inventions and innovations. Similarly, the availability of education, educated labor for facilitated adaptation to new technologies. So, it enhances the productivity of human capital, efficient use of physical capital, innovation and technological improvement, and key roles of development study. Is all the human resource development has necessary to be assigned a key role in any development strategy, particularly in a country with a large population. Improvement in quality of life. Improvement in quality of life is a necessary thing to all people grow up persistently and the positive change is attitude to look forward for his future. Relation between human capital and economic welfare. Empirical evidence to prove that increase in human capital cause economic growth is rather nebulous. This may be because of measurement problem, for example, educated measures in terms of year of schooling, teacher people ratio and enrollment rate may not reflect in quality of education. An analysis of improvement of in education and health sector and growth in real per capita income in both Developing and developed countries shows that there is coverage, coverage gains in the measurement of human capital, but no sign of coverage of per capita real 
इनकम इन अदर वर्ड ह्यूमन कैपिटल ग्रोथ इन डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज हैज बीन फास्टर बट द ग्रोथ ऑफ पर कैपिटल रियल इनकम हैज नॉट बीन दैट फास्ट इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू सर्विस ए रिलेशन ऑफ कास्ट एंड इफेक्ट फ्रॉम द ग्रोथ ऑफ ह्यूमन कैपिटल टू इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ development education and health sector in the real per capita in, uh, income is shown in 1951 1981 1991 2001 and 2014 15 where the all data are given but the real per capita income is more than 2014 15 from 1951 in the crude debt rate is the successive in 2014-15 rather than to 1951 infant mortality rate is very less in 2014-15 and life expectancy rate is 37.2 in 1951 but it's improved and it became very less in 2014-15 is 67 literacy rate is the growing up in 1951 16.67 and then 2014 15 it is much better than before transformation of india into a knowledge economy world bank in its recent report india and the knowledge economy leveraging strengths and opportunities states that india should make a transitions to the knowledge economy and if it is uses knowledge as much as islanders then the per capita income of india will increase from a little over 1000 us dollar in 2002 to 3000 us dollar in 2020 it further states that the indian economy has all the key ingredients for making this transition such as critical mass of skilled workers a well functioning democracy and a diversified science and technology infrastructure Thus, the report point of the fact the further human capital formation in India will move its economy to higher growth trajectory. Human capital formation. Problem of human capital formation. First, high growth rate of population. High growth rate of population is a main problem for the human capital formation. the continuous rise in population has adversely affected the quantity of human capital a reduced per head availability of the facilities second migration migration is the main thing to the uh, create a brain drain as like people migrate from the one place to another in search of better job opportunities and handsome salaries so it leads to the loss of quality people like doctor engineer etc who have high caliber and are rare in the developing countries the cost of such loss of quality human capital is very high third lack of proper manpower plan there is a, an imbalance between the demand and supply of human resources of various categories especially in case of highly skilled persons so absence of such balancing has resulted in the wastage of resources next low level of academic standards in the in uh, there is a lot of wastage of society's resources as capability of educated people are either not made use of or are the unutilized in the case of underemployment massive literacy non education of many children poor health facilities are other insufficiencies which have not been attended to the adequately and properly in efficient system in efficient system it means the in respect of education and health is a uh, respect of education the performance is particularly unsatisfactory in the field of science and development of modern technology poverty poverty is the main reason that the people not became uh, proper work in this field so it's 
not the resource is loaded to the information of human capital has been much less than the resource required. Human capital and human development. The term human capital and human development sound similar, but there is a clear distinction between them. Human capital consider educated and health as means to improve labor productivity. On the other hand, according to human development, education and health are integral to human well being because only when people have the ability to read and write the ability to lead a long and healthy life. Human capital treats human beings as means to improve its productivity. Any investment in education and health is unproductive if it does not enhance out of goods and services. So, however, according to human development, human beings are in of themselves. So, human welfare should be increased through investment in education and health, even if such investment do not result to higher labor productivity. So, therefore, according to the human development, Perspective: Every individual has a state to get basic education and basic health care, irrespective of their contribution of labor productivity. It means every individual has a right to be literate and lead healthy life. Education sector. Education implies the process of learning at three levels: primary, secondary, and higher levels of education. It's a wider term than literacy. Literacy just refers to the ability to read and write, whereas education is the process of gaining knowledge and developing necessary skills to participate in the growth process of the country. Importance of education. It helps to developing necessary skills essential for the smooth functioning of the economy. It develops mental origin of the masses and helps in promoting rational thinking of the people. It enables greater participation of the people in the growth process of the economy. By promoting education and social evils can be eradicated and advancement in through and action can be achieved. Growth in government expenditure on education. The expenditure by government on education is expressed in two ways. First, as a percentage of total government expenditure, it indicates the importance of education in this scheme of things before the government. During 1952 to 2014, it increased from 7.92 to 15.7. Second, as a percentage of gross domestic product, it expressed the proportion of income spent on development of education in the country. During 1952 to 2014, it increased from 0 0.64 to 4.13. The increase in education expenditure has not been uniform and there has been irregular rise and fall. However, if we include the private expenditure incurred by individuals and by philanthropic charitable institutions, the total education expenditure will be much higher. <coughs> Growth in government expenditure on education. During 1952 to 2014, education expenditure as percentage of total government expenditure increased from 7.92 to 55.7 and the percentage of GDP increased from 0.64 to 4.13. Elementary education takes a major share of total education expenditure and the share of higher education is the last. In 2014-15, the per capita capital expenditure on elementary education differ considerably across the state's elementary education. Differ considerably across the state from the higher as rupees 34651 in Himachal, but this to as low as rupees 4088 in Bihar. This leads to differences in educational opportunities and attainment across the states. The Education Commission in 1964 to 66 had recommended that the last 6% of GDP be spent on education so as to make a noticeable rate of growth in education achievement. The Tapas Majumdar Committee, appointed by the GOI in 1998, expenditure is of around 
rupees 1.37 lakhs crore over 10 years and 1998 to seven children in the age group of 6 to 14 years under the preview of school education current levels a little over 4% has been quite indicated. In 2009, the UN attacked the Right of Education Act. UN has also started levying a 2% education cases on all union taxes. The revenue from the education sales has been in market for spending on elementary education. Educational achievement in India Adult literacy rate is more than from 1990 to 2014. In 1919, the male ratio 61.9, 2000 in 68.4, in the 2014, 81. In primary completion rate, the male is Good going, and he, he achieves 2000, uh, 2015 in 1994, and the female in 1960, but in uh, 2015, 1990. Youth literacy is, is male 76.6 in 1990, but in 2015, 92. It is improvement for male and youth literacy, and female. 54.2 in 1990, but 87, it is improving rate of females in 2015, it's 87. Challenges in education High literacy rate as per 2011 census, the literacy rate in is 74.04%. Nearly 20% of the children in the age group of 6 to 14 years are still not going to school. UNESCO report 37% of the illiterate adults in the world are Indians. So gender bias, lack of vocational training, low standard of education, insufficient government expenditure, privatization of education, low access level in rural areas. Future prospects of education. Education for all is still a digital regime. Gender equality better than before. Higher education is few takers. The literacy rates for both adults as well as youth have increased. However, the absolute number of illiterates in still as much Indian population was in the time of independence. In 1950, it was noted that directive the constitution that the government should provide free and compulsory education for all children up to the age of 14 years. Had we done this, we would have achieved 100% literacy by now. So, we cannot be satisfied that about the upward movement of literacy rates. So, 100% literacy rate is achieved. I hope all of you enjoy this video and understand very well. We will meet at next video. Thank you.